Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. This week I thought I'd do something different. It's all about watercolour, it's all about a garden bird. So let's dive straight in and roll those introductions. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Okay, everyone, as I normally say at this point, if you've uh, been a subscriber, thank you so much. If you're watching this and you enjoy it, click the like button at the end, share it with your friends, and above all, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. I'll put a little thing up there that give you a reminder. And don't forget my live streams every Monday, every Friday at 7 p.m. Uh, London time. So one's a watercolor, one's an oil uh, each week. So join me for those. And every week, of course, there is a new video on a Friday as well to enjoy. So if you want even more, then dive on over to my Patreon page. There's so much more there to enjoy. It's a great way of people coming on board, getting something for their money, but also it helps me fund all the efforts that I go into making the content for patrons and for YouTube. So take a look at that. And in the meantime, let's talk about house sparrows. Okay, I'm gonna be just quickly drawing this little fella in and it's just gonna be as loose or as quickly as I can. Just want to indicate the sort of head shape somewhere like that. Uh, quite long and quite sort of large for the size and a short bit to the back like that. And then it's all about this beautiful deep chest on the bird because it's three quarters on like so. And I'm doing a fairly simple drawing. I, at least I hope it is anyway. And the tail is now the, the flights disappear and into the tail like so. So that would be all that we see. Let's indicate our eye very quickly. Let's just put our eye in somewhere like that. And all of a sudden our bird is starting to take shape. So now we need to put in all the I's and T's. Let's get it ready for painting. So let's refine the head a little bit over the top there and coming down this way a lot sooner than I had it. It almost, actually, I'm going to need to take a little bit back off and then come back in and a slower angle almost into that part of the back there. And there are one or two lovely little feathers. I'm not going to try and draw those in. It's just no point in doing that. Let's put that part of the neck in. Let's look at the eye again and just check we've got the head in that sort of where we need it here at that sort of turn. And we've got the beak. Now let's get that beak in. And it's a lovely little but short seed eating beak. These are known as passerines. And it's the type of genus or family they're from, like so. And then we've got that lovely little chin bib comes down here that helps us identify the bird. A little bit of the cheek and then back into his fat tummy. And uh, he's got a little bit there and another bit coming down through here. You don't see too much of his feet and legs. What you do see is the splay of the toes. So one, two three and that comes up into the knuckle or the hand as it were and over the knuckle and then back up into the bird a little bit down and something like that and then you just see the back toe going off over there you really don't see anything of the front toe at all just the long center toe and this one here is pretty much all we're going to get to see and the rest is in a lot of deep shadow in there as it sits perched on the edge of this garden post like so so let's just check our drawing a little bit more let's just check this chest i think it could go up just a little bit and just checking where my lines are. i don't want to get over doing the lines too much something like that there you go and let's look at that foot into there all right Ooh pretty much ready to go. Tuck that in there and we've got that lovely cheek under the face. That dark comes into there and up over the back we've got that lovely little chocolatey brown colour, chestnutty brown or whatever you call that. 
and the little eye flash. Now the shape of the eye is not round, it is this little oval. I put that in there and there's a little area front and back like so. And then we've got this lovely little mark that comes down and back up through there. Coming down here and is that lovely little sweep into there and that gives us the head shape there. And then we've got Bib, let's bring that bib down a little further, comes up and round the back there and disappears. And then we've got all these lovely russets. Now, then, is my back long enough? I don't think it is. I'm going to just come back a little further on here, somewhere about there. That will give me a little bit more for the wing to sit up in there quite tightly, down through the back, and then the tail. We're gonna, it's actually more spread because it's balancing, it's actually splayed its tail flight, so like that. It's just about ready to go off. Now the beak comes up into the head a little. So we're just gonna check those drawings before we go any further. Just take off a little bit of what I don't need. Nice soft edge to the beak. I don't make it too hooked either. That is looking a little bit too pronounced. So just a quick tip to there and then underneath and we've got the lobe coming down there that's possibly a little too deep always refine just keep your drawing keep refining it keep checking it and seeing where you feel that it needs to go I think we're pretty much set to go I like the little drawing and now let's get in with some color uh, where should we go? Lovely grey wash. So let's put a little bit of ultramarine violet into the pan. Not too much, just a little bit. And I'm looking around at what colours. I think a little bit of the uh, Indian red to come into that. Take some off to one side. Look at a little bit of yellow in there, just to grey it out. Let's just put in our first little colours of greys and into the browns. Let's just put in some really let these settle down and come away and in. We don't need to go too far into there but what we can do is put a little bit of Indian red into the pan and some yellow uh, raw sienna sorry. Let's just warm that up. Let's just put that into this wing and we're going to set that up and let it just settle down and do that. Nothing more really. Just going to put some out there, maybe a tap of orange, just to give that a bit more excitement out the back there. And a little over the eye here. So let's just come over here and let that drift off into the back of the head and disappear. Now I can tap that little bit out there just to preserve it. By tapping it out, of course, we do leave uh, the paper dry and we will stop it bleeding on. Okay, I think we can carry on quite safely now. And I'm going to put another layer in now. They're going to mix some of these reds and some of these violets together just to give me a second look at some of the dark passages underneath the tummy of this lovely bird. But I'm trying to leave one or two areas that are not as dark. So I'm going to come all the way into there and it gets a bit bluer. So come back with some ultramarine blue into on its own there and just bring that into the back very subtly like so. And let that settle up. Because the point is that with all these colours they will of course go darker, uh, sorry go lighter, not darker, go lighter as they dry out. So don't worry too much. I'm just going to drop in some lovely colours to give the depth underneath the tummy. Maybe just a little bit up in here. Just dropping colours, pigment straight into the painting. And just let that dry up and do what it wants to do. You can, of course, come in and lose some of these edges if you want to. If you feel they're a little too hard, you can come in and soften some of these marks as so they become a lot sort of... Um, soften going into the next color like that. I quite like I like having soft edges. Sometimes when it's really bright and sunny you're going to stick those hard edges in but it's not always necessary. 
Now I'm going to come in with some burnt sienna and I'm going to have that on the side of that red and I'm going to put in a little bit of cad red to that too just to bring it up a little bit more and then start coming quickly with some of those shapes around here around the eyes that give the characteristic beautiful colors to these birds and it's funny because you often hear people call these LBJs and that actually stands for a rather rude statement of little brown jobbies um, and I think that they are so beautiful and you see them in the hedgerows, you see them uh, in your garden, around your home and they're anything but just little brown jobbies, they are so beautiful and just softening some of that into the back there didn't want that to go all the way up there, we're going to lose some of that down like so and come back in with one or two taps in here to suggest the wings and the colors within the wings are beautiful lovely orangey reds sort of russets and all sorts of wonderful colors going on in here I'm just going to suggest one or two of those as they come down soften one or two marks so they look as though they are um, sort of going into the next one soften a couple of these edges and I think that really just makes a really soft impact for the whole thing. I'm going to let each one dry up a little bit and I'm just going to come in with a little different color on one or two of those there and leave that as is. Now I'm going to look back in here again in a minute because I need to add a little bit to that. I'm coming in with a bit darker, a bit warmer. So I'm just going to tap in and the paint is still wet but you can see by tapping in and choosing the moment when I actually do that, I can allow some of the bleed to continue, but not too much because the paint is drying up. You don't want to put too much paint or water, sorry, into that mix either, to be quite honest, because what you can get is it will pick up the pigment and push it. And that is not always advisable. It's not always what you want to happen. Just taking that up there a little bit, suggesting that that's getting dark as it comes down. I really would like to drop in a bit less of that blue and take some out with a bit more of the reds coming in. I'm going to do that right there. Okay, and maybe one or two lines up to the side here. And away up to the back of the bird, which is quite dark up through to the rump. All right, so now we've got to make a black. And the thing is that you can make loads of blacks. Uh, you can use a real black, of course, and that can be quite mundane as it goes. Or you can mix your own black, and the best way to do that is to use transparent colors. And as watercolor, it's very easy to have a palette that's full of opaques and full of uh, transparent. So we're going to use transparent color. And let me show you what I mean. Now, a good transparent dark is going to be an indigo. It's a lovely transparent blue. Look how rich and dark that is. Now to that we could use an orange which is a translucent orange. That will take it away from the blue of course. There are other ways of doing it. You can use a uh, transparent yellow here and the greens. All these reds they are very transparent but let's go in with some vermilion. Darken that up and let's just look at the dark we've made. Now I'm just going to come in, I'm going to just put that dark into the eye there and I'm going to look at the beak very very quickly and I'm going to put in the colour which I feel best works. You can see how this uh, black has really, and that's not black, I didn't use any black paint at all, I just used some um, transparent colours of, in this case, indigo, red and orange, that's all I use for this. And now I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to put, it's quite, it will get quite grey, but I want to suggest that around we can come back in on this colour. Now I'm trying to protect a little bit around the eye where you've got the shape of the eye itself. The eye socket, it, or what sort of holds the eye as it were, is a little thin line of pale um, feathers around that bit of skin that holds it all there. And I'm just going to come down, and we've got this lovely shape comes down the throat here, and mix a little bit more, 
and I want to come in with some more afterwards so here we've got a little taps and it is just little taps that suggest the um, shape of this uh, bib as it were that comes down lovely little bib into the feathers and they become quite well, it depends I think actually the the better the bib a male has the more uh, chance he has of finding a mate it's quite a, a thing that um, it's a bit like blue tits uh, sorry great tits where they have this lovely uh, bib on the front of them and the stronger that is the more chance they have of finding a mate that will want to be with them so yeah it's all good stuff in it all right let's just come down here and let's put in a little bit more dark just around the edge i'm going to use a finer brush if i can fine one i've got one here just a finer brush just to put in the information that i want into the eye now, actually if honest it's only the center of the eye that really is the darkest if you look very closely when you catch a bird in full light the center of the eye is the darkest and it has a very 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 fine white uh, brownish hue around that now I'm just coming back in very very quickly and just beefing up some of this color here on the beat that comes down into there and around the top like so and underneath here we've got more darker little dark accents of this bib up to the edge there I'm going to join it up a little bit more a little bit that's a bit thicker that's a little better that's it that's a lot more sparrow like I had it looking a little bit wrong I think we've got a lot more sparrow happening now and a little few flicks out to the side should end up finishing this bib off and a little um, sort of bib there and you can see the very fine feathers underneath the chin underneath the beak that are just given rise to the shape of it and it also helps uh, the shape of the bird overall as well so just a little bit darker here and there just to reinforce the first lot that I put in these two will dry lighter and you may feel that you've got to go in with another lot it can be and it doesn't matter if you do there you go just soften that off as it goes away like so and we've got to look at some of these dark marks here on the back because there's a wonderful um, pattern on the back of these birds i'm not going to try and suggest everything as it exactly is because i can't see too much of it so i'm just going to indicate what we're doing one two three lovely patterns there with a nice shape down in here and that's all it is it's a number of shapes that come together to form the wing nice one underneath there and we've got quite a bit out through the back here which will be the primary feathers that you my photography is not the best and my depth of field i have to admit to you suffered greatly on this picture so i got the bird in focus but i did actually um miss out on one or two aspects of getting the bird in a lot more sharp as it went backwards but i'm not too worried it's okay not the end of the world okay and there's a few lines that go around and up and over the eye let's get those in and just down through the back in there and then they turn quite brown and we're nearly finished uh, certainly we're nearly finished with this part of the painting just want to come over and reinforce some of these beautiful brownie colors in the back now i did say i wanted this to be loose and i suppose it isn't and it is Depends on your definition of what loose should really be. I feel that we could go on and refining shape and form for such a long time. And the more you do, the less loose, as it were, uh, it becomes. But I feel that you can have loose but still have an element of detail. It really is down to interpretation. Um, but there you go. I think we're getting our little house sparrow looking like a house sparrow 
just want to put a little bit of form up around here just lacking a little bit around there and I'm going to put in I'm going to come into a sort of bit more blue gray so I'm going to come back in with some indigo I'm just going to get a little bit more water than I have had so I just want to tap that into there like so and this is a sort of mix of grays and browns so I'm just going to come in around the beak around this side of the beak here and hopefully we're not doing too bad with this a little bit of shape around the front a bit more in there and very quickly very pinkish let's just put the bit of vermilion into there let's just come down here very very quickly with the toes so one goes out there, one comes down through there, and one is there. And then, of course, we've got the knuckle and the back toe. Here we said we didn't see too much of the toe. We've got the front one that's sort of curved in like so, and this one's coming down like that. And it's a little bit longer. Let's bring it down there. You really only glance and see a little bit of that other toe. Just check this one here. It could be just a little longer too like that okay it's not too bad I'm not too unhappy with that I do want to come in with some darks and we haven't used too many colors in this got to be said a little bit of dark under there a little bit of shadow and that onto that back toe there and of course around into some of this there let's just put a little bit down through there and the same on this one here just checking this one needs a little bit of show there and now I'm going to save some of that it's going to come down like that save that a little bit because what I want to do is just put a very quick wash in with a slightly bigger brush this is very very quickly now and I'm going to put in a raw sienna just a quick wash just a suggestion of what's there just take it up into the bird and that is my post that it is on believe it or not it is <laughs> it's meant to be anyway I'm going to come back in so I want to put a bit of dark on as well so I'm going to leave that for a minute to dry up okay we're working pretty fast I want to put in a dark but I want it to be quite warm so I'm going to use quite a bit of orange in that and quite a bit of water. I want it to be dark, but I don't want it so dark. I just want to put in like something like this that will suggest um, some darks on this bird or against the bird. And I'm trying to employ a little bit of counter change. I just want to suggest what's going on and a little bit around here too against that dark of the back around the top of the post that will just isolate that post in place like so and leave it like that doesn't need to be any much more than that just taking it down I like the idea of a couple of the slops that have just come into play there so we will employ that I'm going to put some of this violet in too that's really quite nice some of this violet in and just tap away with a few splats always very nice I quite like this idea I see it go on with an awful lot of painters and I quite like it attach some into it there I think we're not far off well I think we're pretty much done actually just want to put a very very thin just a very thin now you should have had a bigger brush but I just want to put a little bit of extra detail into this cheek it is predominantly white but I just wanted to put in a little bit of um, off-white some some other sort of slightly murkier colors that suggest there's more going on there all right one last thing to do and that is well I haven't actually put a bit of the top of the big beak in so let's just put that in there you go we've got the nice bit of light on the top there so that sorts that out but one last job before we finish 
and it's always important and that is the very tiny little catch light in the eye there we go that just brings our bird to life job jobbed now you can always go in with tons more detail as I said but all you need to do is a very simple bird and the thing is with this that you can actually sit in your garden and you can sketch little birds in your garden from the comfort of your own chair and um, yeah and the more you do the better you become and get for it so always worth considering so there we are okay so I hope you've enjoyed that I had a lot of fun painting this little bird beautiful things we do sort of take them for granted we see them every day and we shouldn't and just to sit and watch the males the females and the babies this time of year coming out being fed it's so so much fun so I thoroughly recommend that you get out in your garden sit in a chair nice cup of tea or on a hot day a nice cool drink and sit and sketch them bits of them you don't have to try and get the whole bird try and get the the essence the the little positions and the more you do it the more your hand eye and brain start to understand start working together and you start understanding how to draw them so with that said get out there and have a go and in the meantime i look forward to catching each and every one of you next friday as always i haven't got a clue what i'm going to paint but it's going to be fun i hope you join me and in the meantime if you're not a subscriber subscribe like share comment they're always welcome and don't forget the live streams and the patreon all the best to you stay safe have a go at this one catch you all next week bye bye guys bye bye